The Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training is carrying out major works at seven primary schools under Phase 2 of its Primary Education Domestic Program to address serious issues identified. Those schools are Belches, Wesley Hall, Belmont, St. Christopher, St. John's Primary, Westbury and St. George Primary Schools. An assessment of these seven primary schools, which were identified with serious electrical problems, revealed that the schools had very similar issues, including very old electrical wiring and fittings, overloaded electrical systems, a poor level of lighting in most classrooms and unreliable Wi-Fi. The Primary School's Electrical and Audiovisual Information Technology Upgrade Project, which is estimated to cost $4.4 million, will therefore seek to address these problems through the upgrade or replacement of the lighting and power systems and the modernization or new installation of audiovisual and information technology infrastructure at each school. Civil works will also be done to address structural and maintenance issues at the schools. The project, which started a few weeks ago on July 19th, is anticipated to finish by September 17th, and the contractors are committed to shortening the delays wherever possible to ensure that the schools are ready for the reopening of the new school year. In keeping with government's commitment to create employment for as many persons as possible, as well as offering as many small businesses in the current economic climate an opportunity to generate economic activity, around 25 medium and small businesses have been engaged to provide a variety of services to the project, including construction, information technology, and professional services. Some members of the project management team explained what is involved in a program of this nature. My name is Joe Steinbott and I am principal from Steinbott Management Services. We're construction project managers. I have a team of four project managers that work with me and we are, had been chosen to review the electrical systems at seven of the government primary schools. And the reason for asking for the review was that the ministry was getting concerns and complaints about systems not working and functioning properly. We put together a team of consultants consisting of um, electrical engineers and we split the schools in two. We had two um, teams of electrical engineers. One team is from EMCE and the other team is from A to B consultants. And what we found as a general rule was that the schools had what appeared to be continually being facilitated when some request was made. If a room was being converted into nutrition space and they needed plugs for fridges or this and the next, there were all of these things were put in. But what was never really done was for a complete check and overhaul of the system to support the end users. And what we found was that most of the circuits and systems were overloaded and as a result they were causing problems and that was the type of problem that was generally being found in schools. In addition to that, unique to a number of the schools was that the wiring was so old that when you actually held the wiring and you just use your fingers you could take the insulation off the wiring and that was going to was be a major fire hazard. So a decision was taken to upgrade the schools and to make them compliant with the um, electrical codes for Barbados at the time. It was also decided that we should upgrade the AV IT systems in the schools and so that you know technology is becoming more and more used in the schools even at primary school level. After lots of thought and planning, we had made the decision with the Ministry of Education that we would standardize the schools. So by that I mean we would make sure that they all had the same light fittings. The AV IT systems would use all the same equipment. And even though there were being, uh, the schools had seven different contractors, seven different AV IT contractors, seven different electrical contractors, because one of the ministry's requirements or the 
the government's requirement was to try and spread the workload around as they wanted as many people as possible to be employed. So we did that. And in addition to that, we had the government actually source all of the like fittings themselves. That way we could negotiate the best price and we also ensured that all of them were standard in all the schools. So if they had to stock spares for the future, they didn't have to stock lots of different types of equipment. They had the same thing. And in the AVIT, we made provision and redundancy for future if the ministry decided they wanted a central monitoring station to monitor the security cameras that have now been put in at all the schools. So that's where we are. And um, so far it's been going pretty, pretty good. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a bumpy start with some of the schools still having students in when we were supposed to start and we had to delay the start of the individual schools. But we've caught that up. And um, I have to say the contractors and the um, electrical contractors and everybody have really been responding well. And I'm sure that when the students come back, they're going to find a major change in the lighting levels in the room, the consistency of the, the lighting, etc. All of the lighting that has been put in have also been LED lights, so they're energy efficient. You know, and the latest that we can do to make sure that it was done to modern technology, we have done. Working in a school environment lent itself to close contact, no matter how careful we try to be. However, in this pandemic, we have implemented public health policies and measures in schools to protect everyone by installing hand sanitization stations, body temperature checks, and properly ventilated classrooms. While we continue to practice proper hygiene, physical distancing, and wearing masks properly by covering nose and mouth, we should still be concerned about the highly transmittable COVID-19 variants like Delta, which spreads rapidly, resulting in severe illness. Vaccines are tested for safety under very strict regulations. Vaccines are safe and they work. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and the Pan American Health Organization. Everything comes at a cost. And these days, no one profits from the loss like when a child is forced to trade school day socialization for screen time study when a disease decides to disrupt our daily routine and suddenly every one of us is coming undone losing loved ones lives and livelihoods breath and breadwinners families and festivals and freedoms god we feel like it's too much hassle to be human we will always remember the years the earth spun quieter but mother nature showed us how the simple act of standing still can wage war on an illness so may we remember how to be our own army how it takes cooperation for a community to build immunity how unity can nurse us back to normalcy why, why stop at one family when we could save all let me begin preparation it's hurricane season let me sit down and reason let me secure your nation Grow your shelters, Bajan Help out one another, get liberation Develop emergency community plans So that we could function Remove outdoor objects Make sure that you went to the ATM Stack up with water Make sure you clean the gutter in Lord, what about ten food? Make sure you got some stock up in your room Make sure you prop up the pail and tie down the roof Let me start to prepare real soon let me begin preparations It's hurricane season Let me sit down and reason Let me secure a nation Grow your shelters, Bajan Help out one another, get liberation Develop emergency community plans So that we could function Hi, I'm Kimal Knight from Steinbach Management Services and my role as a project manager with this project 
was to make sure that everything was being completed. Um, as you would know, the electrical upgrade was a standardization of the electrical fittings and the AVIT process for seven schools. And even though each school had unique issues to deal with, we tried to go ahead and make each one basically disappear. With some of the older schools like Belmont and Welch's, we had issues where the electrical system was overbuilt, i.e. there were more, there were not enough circuits and more than enough implements on these circuits. Um, this would have resulted in items like scorching on the, around the lights on Belmont ceilings, burnt out plugs at the Welch's Primary School. And we'd also had issues like at the St. Christopher School where the sailing environment basically eroded the majority of the metal lights. Along with this upgrade, we would have undertaken some builders' works. The builders' works were to facilitate the installation of the new lights and the AVIT system and make it worthwhile for doing these upgrades. It doesn't make sense to have a leaking roof and putting new lights on them. So we would have done works like repairing roofs, such as the, at the Belmont School, at the St. Christopher School, replacing an entire upper story storeroom at the Welch's School, updating or rather renovating and ma making sure that the toilets and certain other amenities were okay at these schools, were up to scratch, as in usable for the students, where we found a lot of them were almost derelict. For the primary school, AVIT and electrical upgrade, um, we would have we were identified seven schools that we had to take a look at and make sure that everything was up to standard. And the, pro the project started on the 19th of July, 2021, and is scheduled to finish on the 17th of September, 2021, just in time for school to start. One of the largest challenges that we had was being able to get to all seven locations as they're in different parishes of the island. Uh, none of them are close to each other. Um, for each school, we had individual main contractors, electrical contractors, and ABIT contractors, which resulted in 21 contractors that we had to deal with. And this became a very difficult situation. And even though it was challenging, it was a pleasure to work with this. Good morning, I'm Alan Harvey from EMCE Limited, one of the consultants working with Steinbach uh, team to try and deliver these schools in time. What we were tasked with, first of all, was to go to each of these schools, investigate what the varying conditions were um, and how, and to come up with a, an idea or a way to manage these issues, resolve any issues and to deliver to the teachers and the, and the students a new uh, facility that can give them what they need um, geared towards a new technologically um, emphasized uh, teaching platform. So our focus was on safety, making sure that all of the electrical systems were brought up to code, faults removed so that the installations were safe for the students and staff. We then also looked at the uh, technology that we put into the schools. So a lot of these schools lacked the infrastructure to deliver high level of technology-based learning. We were able to install new cat category six cabling, fiber optic cabling, um, new Wi-Fi solutions, so that all of these schools will have a seamless Wi-Fi solution throughout the entire campus. We also then are integrating smart TVs uh, into each of the classrooms so that the teachers have another level of technology delivery to the students, not just paper, not just pen, but now they can introduce videos, streaming, uh, and in the future, if they want, they could even do um, video conferencing throughout uh, the island or even regionally. We also made sure that security was a focus. We are now introducing CCTV so that um, at the school level, the staff can monitor activities in key areas and make sure that uh, there's some sort of uh, um, visibility 
and recording of what is going on on the campus. And in the future, the ministry will also be able to dial into these uh, CCTV um, deliveries and actually view what is going on at each of the uh, schools. The whole point of this project, uh, besides of course improving the facilities, is to also give the ministry better tools um, for managing the, the campus and give them a higher standard that maybe we can now deliver throughout all of the schools across the island. Part of that also included improving the energy efficiency of the campus. We would have visited many of these schools and found old light fixtures, resting light fixtures. Many of them weren't even working, so students were being taught in the dark. Now we've stripped those out. We're using a new, um, a new standardized um, suite of fixtures that are being manufactured here on island through Caribbean LED. By also using that local manufacturing um, company, we are able to better deliver replacement fixtures um, and we are able to get a warranty of five years, which is unheard of with any other installation that you could do. Um, normally you only get one year. So we had a good experience working with Caribbean LED as a local provider and manufacturer so that LED fixtures are at all these schools, energy consumption will be reduced, lighting levels will be improved. And as you know, you improve the lighting, you improve the student's ability to learn and on top of that now we have made sure that the uh, teachers have a better installation that they can feel proud of and that in the future these schools will have a legacy of improved learning uh, better delivery and uh, a better future for the children For the past year, because of the pandemic, I had to take most of my classes online. I would rather be at school. I miss interacting with my teachers and friends. I want to be vaccinated. Getting vaccinated can help protect me, my teachers, friends, and family from COVID-19. I also understand that when vaccinated, I must continue to keep my guard up by washing my hands with soap and water frequently wearing my mask properly by covering my nose and mouth and avoiding crowds. Vaccines are safe and they work. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Pan American Health Organization. Let me begin preparations This hurricane season Let me sit down and reason Heavy security nation, grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. Remove outdoor objects. Make sure that you went to the ATM. Stack up with water. Make sure you clean the gutter in. What about getting food? Make sure you got some stock up in your room. Make sure you prop up the pail and tie down the roof. Let me start to prepare real soon. Let me begin preparations. It's hurricane season. Let me sit down and reason. Let me secure the nation. Grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. My name is Mr. Trotman, Steve Trotman. I'm the Managing Director of Trotec Inc., the electrical contraction firm responsible for the electrical grid at St. John Primary School. When we came to the school, a lot of the installation was in very bad condition. The panels, outlets, switches, such things were really deteriorating at the school. On making an assessment, we, had, we realized that we had to change out quite a few of the panels in the school, upgrade the lighting, upgrade the outlets. We've also introduced new main cables to the school. We've also introduced new mains into the new IT room and outlets. We've worked on over 16 new LED lightings, LED lights inside the classrooms, including the washrooms, um, teachers areas, staff rooms, kitchen, 
And at present now, we are looking to upgrade the main service entrance to the school because that is deteriorating significantly. But overall, the project, it wasn't difficult, but I was amazed at the amount of um, how bad the installation had degraded and broken down. But with the work we put in, we are quite happy that it's up to standard now for the students here. And speaking to the headmistress and the teachers at the school, we realize they are quite happy with what we're doing. I'm quite happy with how the ministry is handling the entire project. The savings from the primary school's electrical and audiovisual information technology upgrade project have been directed towards carrying out renovations to the Wilkie Cumberbatch School, which will start in the short term.